If you watched EW's The Hunting Lodge livestream today, you are probably very familiar with the lineup of animals that are coming out on the Sundar Patan map due to release on June 18th. This is all very exciting news and something I covered fairly extensively in my previous video because last week when the game was added to the Steam store, there were a lot of screenshots taken of many of the animals that were discussed today. I'm not gonna go too in depth with the lineup of animals because by now it's all over YouTube. There are many other content creators much more popular than me that have already covered it extensively. But the list basically goes Grey Lag Goose, Water Buffalo, Black Buck, Woolly Hare, Tibetan Fox, Wild Yak, Blue Sheep, Barasinga, Northern Red Muntjac, Nilgai, Tar, Tiger, and Snow Leopard. Honestly, the only ones that I didn't cover last week when I was talking about the animals and screen grabs on Steam were the Grey Lag Goose, which hadn't been mentioned yet, and the Woolly Hare. And truth be told, I'm actually kind of disappointed in the Woolly Hare. For small game, I was really, really, really hoping for the Siberian Weasel. We already have plenty of rabbits, and in my opinion, now I haven't seen them in the game yet, other than the brief showing that Jaxie Beard hosted today, they look very much like an Eastern Cottontail, just blown up in size and with a little bit more texture. So honestly, for me, that's a little bit disappointing because the Siberian Weasel was one of the animals that was mentioned in the player survey that came out that also mentioned the Northern Red Muntjac, which led me to believe that because they have shared overlap territory in Nepal, it was likely we were going to see both in this new release. Those are small potatoes and something I'll get over in time. But the real thing I want to talk about today, something that addresses one of the most polarizing aspects of the Hunter Call of the Wild community, is that at least two animals on the new map are going to break grinding culture. Fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, these are two of the most coveted animals on the map. Those being the snow leopard and the Bengal tiger. Now we did have an awesome treat today and got to see all of the color variations of the Bengal tiger. My favorite is the gold, at least so far. I'm personally not too excited about the albino or the full-blown melanistic because both of those don't really exist in the wild. I've done a lot of research into animal color morphs, especially among big cats, and I have never seen a truly full melanistic tiger or a truly full albino tiger. We do have what they're calling the pseudo-melanistics, which are the orange and the white with a very thick black striping, and those are referred to as true melanistics in the tiger kingdom, but I've never ever seen a real life documentation of a solid black or a solid white tiger. But it is a game and it does take fantastic fantastical licenses. Take the puma and the mountain lion, for example. There has never been a documented case of a true melanistic puma or mountain lion, and there's only one confirmed sighting of a leucistic puma in South America that was caught on a trail cam. Now, when we talk about how these animals are going to break grinding culture, we've got to look at exactly what grinding culture is. Currently, grinding in the game consists of hunting primarily water need zones and then shooting those zones continuously sometimes using principles such as herd management to compress your spawn rates and to get higher quality and better trophies. There are many, many people who practice this in the community and almost an equal amount that think this is an exploit, even though Expansive Worlds has come out to say that they do not consider grinding or herd management an exploit. But for some, the repetitious shooting of animals just to achieve a higher scoring or a rarer fur type animal kind of breaks the intention of the game, which is to create a realistic hunting experience from the comfort of your own home. I want to be completely honest and transparent while discussing this. I am a hybrid player. I am not exclusively a grinder, and I do tend to lean to and prefer more casual hunting. That being said, I also do want to have great ones, and because Expansive Worlds has made it so that the great ones are so rare that the casual player will likely never see one in their lifetime, even if they play regularly, you almost have to grind to find one. So as somebody who wants to be a part of that great one club, if you will. Yes, I do grind for great ones. I do not grind for super rares or rares. I like those moments to happen organically as much as possible, but I just want to put that out there because this video is not intended to dog on those who enjoy grinding and utilizing herd management. It's just one style of gameplay that people do choose to use just as another player might want to do a run and gun session where all they do is run across the map looking for animals to shoot. One of the most beautiful things about this game is that you can create the type of hunting you want for yourself, whether it's shooting gallery style, herd management style, realistic style, it provides a platform for you to do all 
of those things, or just one of them, or all of them at the same time. Some of us have multiple grinds going for specific animals while we casually hunt others, and that's okay. But a lot of players have been feeling lately that EW has been somewhat catering to the grinders and focusing more on their material than, say, casual gameplay. And by producing the tigers and the snow leopards in the way they have, it should prevent players from being able to grind them. Now, with that being said, chances are somebody's going to figure out how to do it. It's going to be remarkably difficult, but knowing how stubborn some of us are in the community, it's bound to happen. Making it exceedingly difficult, however, is the fact that the tiger actively hunts you, and there are only 16 of the big cats on the map at any given time. It sounds like they're going to be mostly located in the southern portion of the map with seven rare fur types. This is a first in Call of the Wild history where a non-great one animal has multiple fur patterns, which as Jaxi Beard likes to relate to collecting them all, sort of in a Pokemon kind of way. I'm sure a lot of players are going to be out there attempting as much as possible to grind these big cats so that they can have one of each fur type. But the most impressive news to come out of the live stream today was the information about the snow leopard. Now we think 16 tigers on the map might be a low number count. Apparently there will be even less than that of the snow leopards on the map, making the snow leopard the most elusive animal in the game total. As Jaxi Beard said in the live stream, even if you're lucky enough to spot one of these elusive big cats, you're going to have to pit your entire arsenal of hunting knowledge against it if you want to harvest one. I know as somebody who used to love the tracking system, that's one of the reasons why I've played this game as long as I have. I really, really love this idea that it is going to not only ask us, but demand of us that we return to true hunting techniques. If you want a snow leopard, you're going to have to track, you're going to have to watch your wind, you're going to have to watch your noise, you're going to have to watch your environment, and you're going to have to go looking for it, which is awesome. One of my dream hunts is to be running along in some direction, come across a disturbed vegetation patch, and find fur variation that makes me go, whoa, I need to track this out. And that's exactly what this snow leopard is likely to do. Now, the one thing that Jaxi didn't talk about today was the great one. The great one is going to be discussed next week and I am waiting with bated breath. If you remember a couple of weeks ago, a video came out on my channel where I challenged the way the community was thinking in the direction of the great one by saying our next one is likely to be the wild boar. I'm not ready to call it quits on that just yet. Yes, the great one tar has been identified as our next great one. However, in my last video, it was kind of buried in there, but another wild theory that I do have about the great one tar is that this may be our very first mission-based great one, giving players who do not grind an opportunity to achieve a great one and thus provide some balance to the game. However, with that, I still have pause because again of what Jaxi Beard said in that one stream many moons ago where at the beginning he was really excited to announce that this was not a base map great one only to walk it back kind of hard actually and say it will not be on a base map and referencing only Leighton Lakes in that same sentence. I'm going to tell you this much, it is not a base map great one, first ever. That's all I'm gonna tell you. And it's not gonna be what you think it is regardless. I almost promise that. Is that true next screen was gonna be for the DLC map? I uh, will confirm it is not gonna be on uh, Leighton Lakes. It's not on a base map. I know I should give in. And next week I may very well eat crow, but I'm waiting for the other shoe to drop. I've been following the Facebook page and there's been a lot of conversation from the community saying that's it, just these 13 animals, three returning, 10 new, and then a great one that was announced in sort of a lackluster kind of way. No, there's got to be something more. There's, there's something we're missing. As part of the wild boar theory, I've expanded it a little bit to say, what if there are two? After an entire year in development, I don't think it would be unreasonable for EW to launch 
two great ones at the same time, while also providing some much needed rework to one of the animals from the base map. But again, after all of the information that's been coming out and the fact that we've had confirmation that the three returning species are indeed going to be water buffalo, black buck, and gray lag goose, there's a very real possibility that I am wrong. And if I'm wrong, I will completely own that. And guys, I just want to point out because I've heard some members of the community that were kind of dogging on other members of the community for being very vocal about certain things that wouldn't be on the map only to find out that they were wrong. It's okay to be wrong. That's what makes all of this theorizing fun. As people look at the preponderance of evidence, their perspective and their own ideology can affect the way they think. And so that's where you come up with all these wild ideas, but it is just a game and it's okay to be wrong about what's coming out. If that's the case, I will absolutely own that and I will maybe even eat crow on camera next week. That would be very hard to do. And I gotta say, I gotta hand Three, it to Jaxi for allowing two, himself to be thoroughly one. and utterly destroyed by one of the tigers when he go, go, let go. the uh, whole aggressive bunch go at the end. That was a nice send off. I love that. Congratulations, Jaxi Beard. We salute you. Thank you for your service. Sorry, you're gone now. That was an amazing way to view that hunting mechanic. And it is absolutely the stuff of nightmares or the room black one's going to end up in the room. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. I really want to know what you think about this new mechanic between the snow leopard and the tiger. Please drop that in the comments below. I'd love to have conversations with you about your thoughts and feelings with regard to what's coming out. June 18th, guys, June 18th. I've already made arrangements so that I can play that map the entire week. I'm looking forward to it. I think this is going to be one of my all time favorite maps, and I am so ready to use my real hunting skills on challenges like the Bengal tiger and the snow leopard. Until then, guys, keep coming back to my channel for more adventures with Fox, and I'll see you on our next one. Bye!